The movie opens by showing a world in ruins because of various pandemics, wars, and threats of death. People live in despair, fearing death at any moment. In the midst of this chaos, a scientist known as the pilot believes that the human body is like a machine that can work forever. After years of research, he manages to reprogram the human genetic code, making our cells regenerate automatically, essentially granting humans immortality. To maintain peace, he erases all human memories and implants a special genetic code that eliminates desires for freedom and emotions that could cause chaos. While some people initially rejected this idea, many accepted it, and those who agreed lived in a new world called Alessandra. In the year 2235, a young man named Logos, living in Alessandra, starts questioning the immortal life he leads. Despite his job as an engineer and his role in maintaining Alessandra's infrastructure, Logos begins to wonder about his origins and what the future holds. One day, he feels alone, thinking that no one else sees the world as he does, until he meets a woman named Sunny Tash, who shares his thoughts. She admits to observing him for a while and secretly gives Logos a hidden communication device they can use without being detected by the security forces. Unfortunately, their suspicious actions are captured on surveillance cameras, leading the pilot's assistant, Armuros, to become suspicious of them. Another day, Armuros meets with Ake, a guide who teaches Elisandra's history, to set up a meeting with the pilot. During the virtual meeting, the pilot shows recordings of Logos and Sunny Tash unusual behavior and asks Ake to investigate these anomalies by becoming a guardian or a city monitor. Meanwhile, in his room, Logos receives a signal from his communication device and Sunny Tash asks him to meet her at a specific location. Unbeknownst to them, Ake secretly follows them and reports their conversation to the pilot. Even though there is nothing suspicious in their conversation, the pilot still feels uneasy and wants further investigation. In his room, Armuros tells Ake about Helios, a scientist who once worked with the pilot and was accused of creating a virus that could destroy the pilot's code. Therefore, the pilot is worried that Helios' ideas might have contaminated the system. One evening, while using public transportation, Ake approaches Logos and introduces herself. They chat about their jobs, and Ake intentionally asks Logos for his opinion, considering that he's already achieved a perfect life in Alessandra. Logos, however, questions whether she unquestioningly believes everything the pilot says every day. Ake doesn't answer the question, and Logos leaves her. On another day, Ake meets with her two twin assistants, and tells them she won't be coming to work for a while. She then asks her assistants to gather information about Logos. Meanwhile, Sony Tash takes Logos to a secret laboratory where people like them gather. This community doesn't follow the pilot's maintenance program, which involves taking pills to keep their minds and bodies functioning. By not undergoing maintenance, they experience changes in their way of thinking, similar to Logos. However, Logos starts thinking differently, even though he continues with the maintenance program. Not long after, Sonny Tash informs Logos about the discoveries her community has made concerning Helios, who once worked on the code development with the pilot. According to Helios' past statements, he found out that the pilot had secretly altered genes unrelated to health or longevity. Helios was also the first person to disagree with the concept of immortality and the elimination of human desires. Records show that Helios is an immortal human, like the pilot, who still remembers his past before the pilot captured him and erased his memories. They also found a device created by Helios called the Code Diffuser, which can remove the implanted code in their DNA, allowing them to have feelings like mortal humans. Unfortunately, the device is a prototype, and no one has tried it because it's too risky. To make it work perfectly, they need to find complete data about Helios' thoughts. Switching to the pilot's residence, he's playing chess with his daughter, Amanda, who passed away a long time ago due to an illness. The Amanda before the pilot is actually an artificial intelligence created by him, 
and she still retains some of Amanda's memories from when she was alive. During their interaction, Amanda brings up thoughts about humans living forever without worrying about death. She also briefly mentions conflicting thoughts about humans being given a limited lifespan by God to live better lives. The pilot is surprised by Amanda's words and didn't expect her to remember these things, even though he had erased her memories. He suspects that Amanda's words come from her memories when she was still a human. One day, Ake meets Logos again to check if he's still taking his maintenance pills because she's noticed he's been acting differently. She also confesses that she has some similarities with him, which surprises Logos. However, he decides not to discuss it further and leaves. Some time later, Logos is at a secret headquarters with his friends, and they plan to infiltrate the maintenance facility to install a device that will counteract the effects of the maintenance pills. Their goal is to make everyone in Aelstander like them. Unfortunately, they can't enter the facility without access, so they need someone who has access to all the buildings in the city, like Ake. On another day, Logos meets Ake again with the intention of inviting her to the secret headquarters, especially since she admitted to having similarities with him. He explains that his community is a group of people seeking the truth, and he won't force her to join if she doesn't want to. Surprisingly, Ake agrees to join the community and Logos takes her to the secret headquarters, where she's warmly welcomed by all the members. They inform Ake about Helia's thoughts regarding humans destined to die and living life to the fullest before death arrives. Helidas also talks about the idea of the unity of soul and mind that makes someone a complete human. This concept goes against what the pilot is doing because he restricts them from pursuing their desires. While everyone in Alessandra experiences emotions, they don't have feelings of love or anger like moral humans. Logos and the others reveal that they are trying to access all the feelings of mortal humans using the code diffuser prototype created by Helios. They also want to restore everyone in Alessander to become mortal humans again, so that they have motivation to do meaningful things, unlike immortal humans who lack a sense of purpose in life. That's why they plan to install the countermeasure device in the maintenance facility near Ake's workplace and they hope that Ake will be willing to help them gain access to that room. Meanwhile, at her residence, Amanda seems to be asking her father about his feelings when he learned of her passing. The pilot admits that losing Amanda and his wife were the most painful experiences in his life. However, he explains that this pain drove him and Helias to conduct research and discover the genetic code that grants immortality without death. On the other hand, Ake, who has learned about Logos and his friend's plan, reports it to Armaros. She admits feeling confused after hearing about Logos and the others wanting to open people's minds. Though deep down, Ake wants to help, she's still uncertain about the consequences if they go through with it. Armaros insists that Logos and the others are corrupted in their thinking because they don't undergo maintenance. Installing the countermeasure device in the maintenance facility will only bring suffering to people. Armaros questions why they should change a world that's already perfect unless Logos and the others have twisted thoughts. After some reflection, Ake returns to the secret headquarters and decides to assist Logos and the others in infiltrating the maintenance facility. However, she reminds them of the risks involved, including potential memory erasure. When they reach the building housing the maintenance facility, Ake encounters difficulty accessing one of the corridors. So, she suggests that Logos and his friends take a detour and split up to avoid suspicion from the guards. Ake and Logos plan to find an alternative route. Unfortunately, their actions are discovered by Armaros, who is waiting at the end of the corridor. Unexpectedly, Armaros is aware of their plan and Logos is shocked to learn that Ake knows Armaros, making him suspect that Ake intentionally set a trap to get them caught. Following this incident, Logos is taken to a laboratory for memory erasure. Ake feels guilty about the outcome, even though she genuinely wanted to help them install the maintenance countermeasure device. 
She didn't anticipate that Armuros could access all the rooms in the building, and she felt deceived by Armuros, who had previously claimed to be an ordinary office worker with limited access. On another occasion, the pilot summons Armuros and Ake to express his gratitude for their successful efforts in thwarting the rebels. However, he notices Ake's unhappiness and asks her about it. Ake requests permission to meet Logos again and apologize to him. The pilot informed her that it's not possible because Logos is currently undergoing rehabilitation. Upon hearing this, Ake submits her resignation as a guardian, expressing her desire to become a guide to find more comfort in her work. Although the pilot regrets Ake's decision, he doesn't prevent her from quitting her role as a guardian in Alessander. Following that incident, Ake stops taking her maintenance pills and begins to notice changes within herself, just as Logos had mentioned before. Her once perfect life starts to feel empty, especially as she constantly feels guilty towards Logos, who opened her mind to the meaning of life. One day, Ake finally receives information from the twins that Logos now lives in a small town on the outskirts of Alessander. Without hesitation, Ake rushes to the town to meet him. Unfortunately, Logos has transformed into someone expressionless, and he even ignores Ake as they cross paths. Ake doesn't give up and tries to meet him again to apologize for her mistake that led to his memory loss. Ake who has fallen in love with Logos, kisses him, but he doesn't remember her at all and simply walks away. After her meeting with Logos, Ake returns to the secret headquarters, where Sunny Tash and the others question her arrival. Ake expresses her regret over what happened to them, especially since she played a role in causing Logos to lose his memory. She admits that she initially saw the members of the headquarters as lost individuals, but after she stopped taking the maintenance pills, she started to feel and understand what they were going through. Ake informs them that she has located Logos and has a plan to help him regain his memory, so she seeks Sunny Tash and the other's assistance in executing this plan. Some time later, members of the community manage to kidnap Logos and bring him to the secret headquarters. At the same time, Ake secretly infiltrates the maintenance center to retrieve the data that the pilot had previously erased from Logos' memory. With this data, Ake successfully assists Logos in regaining his lost memories. Meanwhile, Armuros reports Logos' disappearance from the exile city and the recovery of the deleted data. The pilot becomes suspicious that Ake may be behind these actions, prompting him to instruct Armuros to locate the whereabouts of the rebels. On another day, Ake approaches the twins and requests their assistance in gaining access to the maintenance facility with Logos. With the help of Ake's assistant, Logos successfully installs the countermeasure device into the maintenance machine, which will reduce the effects of the pilot's maintenance program. Upon completing their mission, Logos and the others leave the city and establish a camp in the mountains to avoid detection by Alessandra's Tafuri forces. That night, they receive distressing news that their historian, Jirga, has been captured by the guardians within the headquarters. Rumors circulate that Jirga's memories have been permanently erased, leaving Logos and the others unable to restore their friend's lost memories. During a discussion among Logos and the others about the code diffuser, Logos expresses his eagerness to try the device. However, Maidorin advises caution warning that the device is imperfect without Helia's original data and could be harmful to Logos. Despite the advice, Logos secretly decides to use the code diffuser after everyone has rested. He endures excruciating pain throughout his body and is found unconscious the following morning. Fortunately, Logos stabilizes, requiring only time to regain consciousness. Upon waking up, he acknowledges a change within himself and finds happiness in the presence of Ake. The next morning, during the pilot's daily broadcast, Sony Tash deliberately hacks into the channel, redirecting it to Logo's broadcast. Logo's attempts to awaken everyone to the reality that they have been living under the pilot's control, to the extent that they have been deprived of the range of emotions that all humans should experience. Meanwhile, at home, 
Amanda questions the pilot about Logo's actions, and he explains that Logo's thinking is an anomaly resulting from the young man's natural immunity to the maintenance system. While such anomalies, like Logo's, are rare, the pilot acknowledges that he can prevent them by rehabilitating individuals with anomalous thoughts and instilling a new way of thinking in their minds. During the broadcast, Ake showcased the code diffuser device, which had the potential to transform them back into moral humans. This caused everyone to exhibit unusual behavior, appearing interested in what Ake was presenting. However, the pilot remained composed because he knew that the device was just a prototype and would take a long time to perfect. Furthermore, he was the only one with access to all of Halia's data, making him confident that Logos and his friends wouldn't succeed in awakening everyone. Ake, wanting to prove the authenticity of the code diffuser, wore the device and intentionally made herself faint. Upon waking up, she was in a different emotional state able to feel more emotions like mortal humans. Ake and Logos shared a kiss, both experiencing a sense of love they had never felt in Alicender. In the film's conclusion, the pilot was in a state of panic as he couldn't find Amanda at home. To his surprise, Amanda had gone to where Logos and the others were and made a broadcast. She revealed that she was the pilot's daughter, inheriting the scientist's DNA which allowed her to download all of Halia's data into her system. Through this broadcast, Amanda disclosed that she held the key to reawakening the human race's desire to find their purpose in life once again. Moral lesson from the story, if you manage to reprogram your genes to live forever, don't forget to program in a bit of humor. Because a life without laughter is like a computer without a space button that's stuck in an endless loop of seriousness.